In this lesson, we're going to look at the benefits and usage of big data and analytics services. For most companies, I can think about there's a huge amount of data and there's a certain flow to that data. I can think about, well, there's some source, likely many sources of data that produce data in different formats. Some might produce some big export file. Some might be producing data as a constant stream, but I get all of these different flows. Now, what I need to do is, well, I need to extract that data. So there's some mechanism to connect to that system and get out the data. Now, you may have heard the term ETL, extract, transform, load, which is all about that of idea of source to sync. Hey, we get the data, we do stuff, and then we put it somewhere to where we can then perform analysis, get insight about the data. But what you might commonly see today is this idea of what well, we extract the data, it's in its raw source format. And in the old days, we would transform it straight away. So yes, we had the idea that then we need to do transformation to get it into a format that we can then store that's suitable for doing that analysis. However, we did that because there was a limited amount of disk space. And we wanted to get rid of the stuff we didn't need to just get the data we need to get the insight we require. That's not the same today. Today there's huge amount of disk space. So often what we'll also see today is this idea that, well, I have a data lake. And in Azure, this is the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, which sits on top of Blob. And this can really handle any type of unstructured data. And it's actually pretty cheap and it's near infinite in scale. So what we may commonly see today is there's this also idea of we'll actually load it. We'll perform a store of that raw format. So we're keeping it in its raw format. And the benefit here is, what we're gonna do is transform it. So we're gonna actually go through and transform that data. So it can come from there, we can carry on. We'll remove bits, we'll change the formatting, but maybe I get rid of stuff that's actually useful for some query that I don't yet know I want to run. By keeping the data in its raw format in that data lake, I can always come back to it at a later time extract the data and transform it in a different way so I could then get different amounts of insight. So that's a common thing, extract, load, transform, and then we'll load it somewhere else. So what is transform? So the idea of the transform is, well, we had this raw data that's likely not in the right format, and there may be junk in there. I can think about the idea that, well, there's things in that data that's maybe missing certain fields, that's maybe got duplicate data, and I don't really want that. So when I think about transform, we think about the actions we're gonna perform is cleaning. So I can think, hey, I want to clean up the data. So that's about getting rid of those records that are missing values, um, reformatting values so the data is in a valid, maybe it's a certain date format, about deduplicating the data. And then what I'll actually do is wrangle the data. And that's about now transforming that data and get it into a format that I can use in the desired model. So we're gonna transform it, get it into a new format, and then absolutely, we'll then take that new structure and load it into something. We'll load it into the sync. And that could be, for example, a SQL database. It could be a data warehouse. It could be Cosmos DB. Something where I can now fundamentally perform my various analysis that's gonna give me the insight and answer those business questions, which is the whole point of having this set of data. So if I think about that entire thing, What's it? There's a certain orchestration that has to happen for that. So if I think of Azure services, well, there's this idea of an orchestration. So something has to happen to 
do that, to connect to the system, to extract it, to call something, to do the transform, put it in a data lake, load it. And so this is Azure Data Factory. So Azure Data Factory is that idea of this source to sync, managing that complete data flow. So that's Data Factory in terms of the orchestration. That's what Data Factory does. It has some basic native transformation capabilities, but it's really about that end-to-end -end flow of the data. Well, what about these kind of rich transformation services? So there's actually a number of different services in Azure around performing this transformation. So the first key service you're going to hear about is HD Insight. Now, HD Insight provides a number of different open source analytic services. And with those, they integrate very easily to a lot of these services. It's a managed service for you, so I'm not worried about installing any of these particular open source analytic services, but it's gonna provide me that framework so I can then enable these kind of ETL type solutions. Now, there's a broad range of HD Insight services. I'm not gonna go into detail about all of them, but I can think from a, a basic perspective, there's something like Hadoop. So Hadoop is this disk-based yarn performance processing. It has the concept of map reduce. You'll hear this. This is about dividing tasks into smaller parts so I can distribute the various processing I actually need to perform. It gives me this very large scale processing capabilities. So the mapping is all about breaking it down into these key value pairs of data that can then be shuffled around and redistributed to actually then run the reducer where the data is actually processed based on some key. So this is all disk-based. So there's a certain performance characteristic of disk-based solutions. Then there's things like Storm. So what Storm is doing is real-time processing. This is useful for real-time analytics, um, integration with machine learning, continuous computation. You'll hear about Spark. Now Spark is a big one. We're gonna talk about another technology in a second. This is mostly around batch jobs and data transformation. You have some data, this could be structured, it could be unstructured, and I want to do something with it. Uh, for example, transforming that data. So I can schedule a job and then using many different languages, um, Scala, Java, Python, R, Spark, SQL languages, I can then do these transformations. But whereas Hadoop is disk-based, Spark is memory-based. So I'm gonna get a higher performance with this. Then there's things like Kafka. Kafka is all about big data streaming. So when we think about, hey, these sources, I said there's different types, maybe it's a batch output of data. Kafka is about the idea that maybe I have, maybe we talk about IoT, I have huge amounts of sensors. Maybe it's connected cars, factories, whatever that might be. And there's a constant stream of data coming in. Well, Kafka is all about ingesting into my pipe and then dealing with that huge quantity of data. So that's what Kafka is really all about. Then there's things like Hive. Hive LLP. So this is LLAP, uh, interactive query. So I can query data live from the store. So if the data's sitting in this data lake, for example, instead of having to bring it somewhere else, I can actually query it directly in the data lake and get those results. Then there's things like HBase, this NoSQL kind of storage. So a huge range of different services. So the whole point about this, these are all these open source frameworks. But rather than me having to worry about installing it and managing it and all those different things, HD Insight is going to spin those up and make those available to me. Now the next Azure big solution when I think about these various types of data manipulation is actually Databricks. Now Azure Databricks is an Azure 
hosted managed solution of the Databricks solution. And Databricks itself is built off Apache Spark. So if you think about that Spark, that analytics service, what Databricks as a company did is they built a solution built on top of Apache Spark. And so Azure Databricks is a managed Databricks solution available in Azure. So I can easily deploy this using the Databricks control plane. It's using VMs and blobs under the covers, but I don't see that. It has a full native UX, I can use that. It has um, a delta lake, so not a data lake, but a delta lake that sits on top of a regular data lake, but gives me things like version parquet files. So I can store data and various transaction logs, which gives me the ability to do different types of transactions and versioning and auditing. And it can also integrate with the data lake. So with Databricks, once again, because of that Apache Spark foundation, so I think about, hey, it's building on top of that. We have that Python, Scalar, R, Java, SQL, and various frameworks to integrate with it. So when I'm thinking about all those various solutions, hey, we have these around that different transformation. Now, the last service I wanna talk about is if we think, well, Data Factory has this complete orchestration and it lets us talk to various things, the other solution we're actually gonna see is Azure Synapse. So Azure Synapse Analytics. Now this was previously kind of known as the Azure SQL Data Warehouse, but with Data Warehouse, we still had to worry about, okay, there's different services we have to integrate with, we have to have permissions here, here, and here, and well, how do I hook into the pools of computation? And there were lots of challenges and work. We might have six or seven different products to actually light up that complete end-to-end. And so with Azure Synapse Analytics, it actually kind of builds on a lot of the data factory for that flow capability. I get my own Synapse workspace. And through that workspace, there's this kind of capabilities of there's a certain amount of compute and processing we get with Synapse, but it can also have on demand. So there's really this infinite scale analytics, machine learning, business intelligence integration but I can manage it all through this workspace. It has its own data preparation capabilities built on its own Apache Managed Spark component. It has things like Synapse Links, so we can actually go in real time talk to things like Cosmos DB. It integrates with a data lake. So it gives me this ability now with Azure Synapse Analytics, if I want a just complete analytic solution and don't want to have to grab the different pieces, with Synapse, it uses other components but brings it all into this single workspace to really give me this infinite type scale capability.